McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop, Season 2, Episode 9, Trap Door. October 6th, 1921. Continued. It was a sheer stroke of genius, when you thought about it. I had to hand it to Mr. McGillicuddy. It was a hidden hideout like none other. The night enthusiasts don't do a very good job of hiding themselves. They just take a secret doorway down to a cave. Then again, the night enthusiasts are the aggressors, so they can afford to hide poorly. Mr. McGillicuddy knew he had to hide his magic unusuals very carefully, and he had the foresight to choose a murder object, which was clever enough. A hideout hidden in time? Very difficult to find. And then, Mr. McGillicuddy took this murder object and he placed it in a giant pawn shop, a pawn shop stuffed from floor to ceiling with odd and fascinating murder objects. And then, he made the real murder object a nail, and he hammered it straight into the wall. All in all, it was brilliant, and it was next to impossible to find. Of course, I'd found it, but no night enthusiast had found it yet. Apart from the one I was about to lead into it, I felt dizzy all of a sudden, and sort of like an idiot. "'You don't know where Mr. McGillicuddy's hideout is, do you?' I asked Ariana. She snorted. "'Goodness. If I'd figured that out, I would have been everyone's hero. What do you think I was doing all that time while you and I were hiding out in the pawn shop?' "'Stabbing me in the back,' I said. "'Besides that,' she said cheerfully. "'The night enthusiasts and I were also hoping Mr. McGillicuddy would show you and I the hideout.' that he wouldn't suspect me and let us both in. The night enthusiasts have been trying to get their hands on his hideout for decades. I turned and looked at her solemnly. Ariana, I'm going to find Mr. McGillicuddy's hideout. I'm going to meet those people and join their side. I'm going to find my magic unusual family. I'm also not going to leave you out in the cold where wrath can find you and murder you. But I don't know how these magic unusuals will feel about me dragging a night enthusiast into their lair. Ariana sighed and looked at the ceiling, like she was trying not to appear as hurt as she was. So, she said. So they might tie you up and put you in a cage, I said. They may never let you leave again. I'm not a night enthusiast anymore, Ariana said. All right, I said. I'm just warning you. This isn't going to be easy for you. I'll come with you, Maud, Ariana said. I don't want to be alone. And even if Mr. McGillicuddy nails me to the wall by my ear, I'd rather come with you. She added, low, It's about time I tried the good side. Ariana was right. The good side probably wouldn't trade her life at a moment's notice. They also weren't going to nail her ear to the wall, but I figured she was just being dramatic. All right, I said. Do you swear it? Because I know where their hideout is. "'Wait, how long have you known?' Ariana said. "'I just figured it out.' "'She gave me the evil eye. "'How come you weren't working for me all those weeks? "'I tried so hard.' "'Because I am a good person, and nice things happen to me,' I said. "'Do you swear you won't reveal the location? "'To anyone?' "'Maud?' "'She took my hand, like she was going to shake it. I solemnly swear that I will never reveal the location of McGillicuddy's hideout to any night enthusiast, even under torture. And if I do reveal it, you personally will have to come and kill me. Har har, I said. We shook on it. Ariana had promised, although I wasn't sure how much her promises were worth. At any rate, what's done was about to be done. I was going to enter the hideout, and I was going to send Ariana ahead of me. You go first, I said. Grab that nail. That's how you get in. She looked at me, confused, and then spotted the nail in the wall. No, she said. No! She leaned closer. That is brilliant! You first, I said. Ariana looked all around the pawn shop. She might not have been a night enthusiast anymore, but she must have still treasured this moment. To be entering your old enemy's lair, unawares, It was the sort of thing that curdled the blood in the most delicious way. Ariana grabbed hold of the nail and teleported. I felt a hush descend over the pawn shop. I took in this moment. 
After weeks of loneliness, after having no idea how to reach Mr. McGillicuddy, I was about to find him, assuming my hunch was right. I thought about all those nights, feeling so alone, feeling so separate from the rest of the magic unusuals. Could the entrance to the hideout have been here all along? Had they watched us? Did they know we were hiding in the pawn shop? We'd been so close, and yet so far, for so many weeks. It was like finding out there was a castle in your backyard. I grabbed the nail, pinching it between my fingers, like it would anchor me to this moment. Then, I teleported. Ariana was right there, but no one else was. As exciting as it would have been to teleport straight into a mess hall full of magic unusuals, we didn't. We stood in a plain, boxy room. The walls were rough, unadorned wood. The floor was old and damaged, but it had been beautifully made once. I smelled cinnamon and cedar wood. There was nobody. At least, not that I could see. Whoever had been murdered here wasn't lying in a heap for all to see. That made sense. I doubted the magic unusuals wanted to see a corpse every time they entered the hideout. But the room wasn't plain, and it wasn't devoid of grisly features. Across the wall in red paint, someone had smeared death to all mice. I do mean mice. M-I-C-E. For a minute, I was about to burst into laughter, imagining that the murder that gave this room its power was a tiny grey mouse that had died in a trap. Something told me that this wasn't the murder of a mouse, however. I didn't know what mice were, or why someone wanted them dead, but I guessed that they were human, and one of them had died in this room. Now what? Ariana said. She turned to me. Uh, I said, it should be beyond here. I stepped up to the only door in the room, and I cracked it open. It led outside, into a blustery night. It was a beautiful evening. I recognized where we were. We were in the very same city, in the old brewery district. I stood on the threshold of a large brown brick building. A brewery, I think. The air was blue and misty with twilight, and golden lanterns glowed across the street. The street was all brewery on this side, and all beautiful wooden mansions on the other. The mansions were painted in soft shades of blue and dark pink, and old-fashioned metal lanterns glowed on the porches. I took a breath. It was lovely. I smelled green things, and horse dung, and sweet sawdust. I hadn't known the city could smell so much like a farm. I think we might be in the 1850s, I said to Ariana. Better squat, so your skirt looks longer, Ariana said. Or you'll get arrested. Stupid skirt. I'd had quite enough of that already, thank you. Me and my shockingly attractive ankles. Do you see anything that might point us in the right direction, I said? A secret symbol, or a... I suddenly had another flash of insight. If I was hiding a secret base, I wouldn't let anyone walk outside. Not in their 1920s garb. Not in front of a bunch of mansions. I turned back inside. There were no other doors in the room. There wasn't even any furniture. Then I spotted what I was looking for. Another nail, hammered into the far corner of the floor. It wasn't much, but as soon as I noticed the nail, I noticed slits in the wood around it that formed the shape of a trap door. We were almost there. We hope you've enjoyed Season 2, Episode 9, Trap Door, of McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop. McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop is written and performed by Minerva Sweeney Wren. All rights reserved. Visit MinervaSweeneyWren.com to see photographs of the real McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop and learn how you can support the show, keep it advertisement-free, and explore more stories by Minerva Sweeney Wren. McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop will continue with Season 2, Episode 10, Prisoners of the Estate Room.